Coming up on World's Greenest Homes. In California, a beach house that's cashing in on the ocean breeze and attracting the stars. They shot 11 episodes of California Cage. With Dave Duchovny. And a green oasis in sun-baked Greece with some really smart design. It sees where the sun is, and then accordingly, it brings down the shutters. I'm Emmanuel Beliveau. Come with me on world's greenest homes and see the most extraordinary homes on the planet. Homes that are gorgeous, cool, and green. Our first home is in Venice Beach, California, one of the hippest places on Earth. Venice Beach is about a half hour drive from downtown LA. And if you're a beach bum, where better to build your dream surf shack than a stone's throw from the Pacific Ocean? Just two short blocks away from the beach, in this, well, ordinary neighborhood in Venice Beach, California, sits a home that's not so ordinary. This home was designed to live and breathe off the ocean breeze. This house was the brainchild of architect and owner David Hertz. He lives here with his wife Stacy, their three kids Colin, Sophie and Max, and their best friend Keita. Dave has been green from the very beginning. When I started my architectural training in the 70s, it was during the oil embargo and the energy crisis. But as of the last 20 years, we've really pioneered a lot of technology and mixed good environmental design with good design. Dave. Hello, how are you? How are you doing, Manny? Hi, how are you, Manny? Nice to see you, nice to see you. Great. Right. Thanks for having us here. Sure. This place looks amazing. Instead of a single building, this family home is split into four pods linked by walkways. It cost $1.3 million to build the super home. It's now worth a cool $5 million. Pod one is at the front and is the family's main living space. There's an open plan living room, dining room, and kitchen. Upstairs is a sunny master bedroom. A hallway takes the two smaller pods at the back with three kids' rooms. And there's more than enough bathrooms for everyone. The fourth pod is devoted to partying with an entertaining space and this fabulous media room. And a pool in the middle connects it all. What inspires a place like this? I've been in Venice a long time, and, and I built it in two phases. This was a vacant lot when I built it in 1994. The property line came just about to here. After about five years, I was able to buy the little house next door and nice. put in the lap pool and two other buildings. So David ended up with four pods in total, and there's a big advantage in having the building split up like this. I broke the building apart to create natural ventilation. I wanted to take advantage of the free air conditioner that's a couple blocks away called the Pacific Ocean. I actually even feel yeah. now this, this incredible, you can feel it right that's now. our free air conditioner. And that saves a small fortune on energy bills, around $7,000 a year. The clever indoor-outdoor design of this home means you can just pull the whole building open. And now this is the dining space? Yeah, it's an autonomous guest house with a full kitchen, but also a large banquet table. Stacy made this in our shop, and it's made out of all the scrap wood from making all the doors and windows, which Your we- wife do. made this? Yeah, so it's a great way to reuse every little piece of the wood. And the staircase, this is something very interesting. Once again, just the meeting of wood. Right, this is something that I designed and built, and this is made out of ipe, which is a sustainably harvested wood. Right. It's incredibly hard, it's almost like steel, and there's two bolts that bolt it all together, and it's designed to be finger jointed and open to allow for the, both the hot air of the radiant heating as well as natural ventilation to come through. Yeah, because you're all about wind and everything moving around and funneling air through. That's right. This space seems familiar to me. The house has been used as a location for films and even uh, TV shows. Most recently, they shot uh, 11 episodes of California Cage. With Dave Duchovny. That's right. If there were an Oscar for Best Supporting House, this would be a shoe in This concept of inside-outside living is incredibly cool. Let me open these up. There we go. 
And just are... like that, hey, we've blurred the, uh, the lines between outside and inside. That's right. They are designed to pocket right into the walls and fit right into the architecture. The intent was to really just deconstruct the box right. and not make you feel enclosed. Yeah, yeah, most buildings have a post in the corner. It's not gonna fall on our head, is it? No, should be, <laughs> should be good. I love the pool in the center of the courtyard. While air in the house is naturally cooled, this pool is naturally heated. It's clever stuff. If you've got solar panels, it's no great leap to run off heated water to have a pool like David's. If you have a narrow shape like this and paint the inside a dark color, it will help to store all that naturally generated heat. And this pool is totally chemical free. There are sensors in the water that measure impurities. When levels get too high, silver particles are pumped in to kill bacteria and copper to kill the algae. The family gathers in the main living space at the front of the property. And no great surprise that David's gone for that ultra modern open concept. I mean, it's a nice, simple space where you can have the dining room open to the kitchen and the living room, but then also more intimate spaces for family gatherings where there's built-in seating. What kid wouldn't want to hang out here with their friends? Keeping an eye on his kids was exactly what Dave had in mind when he designed the space. Next door, Dave's wife Stacy shows me where the family goes to kick back and relax. Now, what is this room all about? It's turned into what we call our media room. It was sort of more of an outdoor living room. We'll have movie nights, and we invite maybe three to five families over. And what about Dad? This is the quiet spot Dave likes to call his own. This is David's favorite spot probably in the house. And this is his indoor, outdoor shower, but so this is kind of his space. This is not your space at all? No. Oh, you would spend no time in here, would you? It looks like there's no room to spend any time in here. What's your favorite spot in the house? My favorite spot in the house would be a secret little office that I have that you will never find. <laughs> <laughs> it's tucked away somewhere. Exactly. I literally have a little I think five by eight foot room that's kind of hidden behind cabinets so nobody knows where it is. Not even the kids? Except for the whole world now. <laughs> so were there any issues with you as far as finding materials or products that were sustainable? Well, there are very few materials on the marketplace yeah. for that, so some of them I invented my yeah. own. And that includes his own kind of concrete, something that Dave calls syndicrete. It replaces a portion of concrete around 50% with ashes and carpet fibers. That makes it half the weight of normal concrete, and the materials can be sourced locally. For Dave, this project became a giant testing ground for his ingenious green ideas. I said, well, I wonder if I can make a sink out of it. I don't necessarily want to do that for a client first off, so I made a sink for myself, and then a shower and a bathtub and thermal mass wall. This thermal mass wall is a key feature in David's design. It actually regulates the temperature in the house by either absorbing heat in the wintertime or letting heat out through its radiant tube system. And this wall runs through the entire house. And there's syndicrete pretty much everywhere you look. Benches, countertops, even their table all cobbled together from ashes and carpet fibers. And it seems like it's strong enough that if you had a pretty wild party, you probably could dance on top of this. I think it has a few heel marks <laughs> on there. To... Upstairs in the bathroom is where Dave got really creative with syndicrete. You name it, he's experimented with it. I did this shower that has all kinds of unusual tiles where I use things like bottle glass and computer parts, electronic components, records, even the multicolored recycled yeah. plastic. And did you actually press a leaf into it there as well to give you that uh, yeah. shape and relief? Very cool. I'm here on the second floor of David's home, and this is the master bedroom. And as you can see, it's floor to ceiling glass. Now the green reason for doing this, let the sun shine in. But I can think of a few red flags why I wouldn't do it. Wow, what a beautiful bedroom you have here. Thank you. It's absolutely yeah. stunning. I love all the timber everywhere. Yeah, it really warms it up. They're all reclaimed old timbers that have been re-sawn and right. 
it's really quite warm. You know, Dave, I was just noticing all this glass you have in your master bedroom. Well, the reason that we did it is primarily for passive solar right. gain. Right. The sun comes straight in, hitting the concrete floors. And of course, that in turn is absorbed by the concrete and by the radiant tubes that run through it, and that radiates heat it. Oh, so do you passively actually collect heat off the floor and then move it through the rest of the house? That's right. Using the sun to heat the house is a great idea, but such huge windows in the bedroom? It doesn't seem quite right. Sir, I can't get away from all these windows. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is the lack of privacy. I mean, from down here, actually, you know, from down here, it's not so bad. Yeah, it's really designed so that when you're standing up, you can see everything outside. But when you're down low, the high, solid stucco parapet wall hides and screens the neighbors. Well, I'll just have to take Dave's word for it. And huge windows do have other pluses. That is nice. I mean, you can sit in bed, look out your window, and you can see the you can see the palm trees moving in the wind, and it's such a beautiful sight. Yeah, and you can see where where Kita likes to. Uh, to be, that's... Sit in the sun. Yeah. Stay nice so, and warm. She just follows the sun around. Just like everyone else in Venice Beach, I guess. Attached to the bedroom is an outdoor patio that's perfect for relaxing. We feel like this is part of our master bedroom and it offers an alternative environment to the inside. If you have a hot night, it's great to be outside, to sleep on the sleeping porch or come out, read a book in the sun. So this wall runs through the entire house? That's right, it starts right at the front of the house, at the front gate, runs through, pops through this courtyard, through this glass bridge, and comes through the back building and right out the back side. It's a beautiful view you have from here, I mean, that's great. You're right on axes with the other bridge. You can see the three bridges from this point. Oh, okay. And now the entire property is opened up. And you can see that it just extends the entire length of the property. It's all glass and has large windows that also can slide open. And you can and peer you can really just, you know, look right out and see the pool. This is great. What a view. I bet this is a premium spot when there's a big party going on. Yeah, it's fun. We get to good overview here. Now, Dave's kids must be the envy of every other kid on the block. They have two pods at the back of the property all to themselves. There's just one more place to explore in Dave's amazing green home. All right, so I'm guessing you have everything on your roof we need to look at? Yeah, it's a real labyrinth. I've tried to utilize all of the roofs for something. This is a golf course? Yeah, a little driving <laughs> range. <laughs> driving range is great. Want to hit one? Go right ahead. <laughs> what house isn't complete without their own driving range? And then I've got a greenhouse here. What are you growing in your greenhouse? Well, Stacy's been uh, propagating orchids. They do wonderful inside the house with all the glass, yeah, yeah. but they often, we bring them up here to really propagate them and start them. But it isn't all fun and games up here on the roof. It also plays an essential role in Dave's grand green vision. On this part of the roof is really where all of our technology is in terms of solar panels. Right. We're trying to harvest the energy of the sun. 80% of this home's electricity is generated by solar panels. That means the family has all but chucked away the electricity bill. We heat our, all of our hot water with solar with a gas backup, and then in turn we heat all of our floors with our hot water heater. And it's incredibly economical because most people are paying to have their hot water hot all day long anyway. And well, the average homeowner needs really about an hour worth of hot water per day, yet you're heating it 23 hours, you're not even using it. Right. Is there anything you do differently in building your home? You know, most everything has worked amazingly well. I, when I first installed all the solar and the radiant controls, I, I was a little disappointed because there wasn't enough to do. You know, I <laughs> yeah, wanted yeah. to come up and yeah. turn the knobs yeah. and control the valves. It's pretty automated. It, it does it's its incredibly thing. simple. Have you thought of a green roof at all? Yeah, we had, at one point, uh, we had an entire green roof section of this back roof where we actually had up to six foot corn, rooftop corn. It was great. And why'd you take it out? We got bitten by the uh, golf bug and there went the organic garden. Well, I think, I think you're okay to do that. You have a lot yeah. of things that are sustainable and green right. going on here. You're okay to entertain yourself a little bit right. once in a while. Dave really broke the mold when he built this incredible home. 
People often thought that to be environmentally, it had to be a house made out of tires or a straw bale house that was very woody-goody or you know eco. Natural light, natural ventilation, natural local materials. These are essential in good design to be responsible. These are ways that people just want to live, and I think that they really appreciate that. What an amazing house. At the end of the day, a house is a home. And I think David's managed to design a home that, well, is going to leave a sustainable impression in this ordinary neighborhood. Classic architecture, like these columns, are the backbone of Western architecture. And we have the Greeks to thank for that. Even today, Greece is home to some really cool architecture, like our next home, which combines luxury living with ideas that are as old as the hills. Greece lies in southern Europe. Its capital is Athens, home of the gods, home to one of the oldest civilizations on Earth. Turn any corner and you'll likely bump into an ancient monument. In Vuliamani, a suburb of Athens, you'll find this monument to the latest in stylish design. One of the first houses in Greece to go green, it was built to harness the hot Mediterranean sun while keeping the interior cool as a cucumber. This gorgeous and clever house was the brainchild of Alex Kuna. He's Swiss, his partner Yen is Greek. In the shadow of the ancient Acropolis, they decided to build their temple to all things cool and green. You have the whole idea on paper, that's one thing, but then seeing it growing is just so unbelievable. We had a very nice working relationship with the architect, very similar ideas, and, and then when it came to the actual building, I decided to do the project management myself, which was good fun. It was a very good experience, and I would, I would uh, always do it again. And Alex kept track of the construction every step of the way. I set up a camera that would take a, a picture every like five minutes or 10 minutes. Uh, during the whole building process, so you, you have you have a time lapse from there from the bottom to the finished uh, construction. When Alex and Yen aren't kicking back and relaxing, there's three kids to run after, all under the age of six: Olivia, Leon, and baby Louise. Olivia's coming. This is one beautiful home spread out across one level. Off the entrance lobby, there's a huge open plan living room with sunken chill out zone and a dining room. Next to that, there's a light and airy kitchen. Along the back of the living dining room, there's a hallway that wraps around the central courtyard and leads to the master bedroom with master bathroom. There are two kids' bedrooms, a guest bedroom, and a family bathroom. So this is our home, welcome. The entrance, going down. The idea was that we have one big space, like this one, where you can really have people throwing parties if you want. But you can also be like totally cozy, just the two of you, you know, there in the corner. That's why we kept the living room in the tatami corner, very cozy. A unique feature is that amazing floor. It's rammed earth. And Alex only had to look to his backyard to find the raw materials. Basically, there was a huge pile of earth outside the house. And then we had to bring it with wheelbarrows. And I was hiring these guys to help us. Just one problem, getting the builder to believe Alex's dirt floor was for real. I thought it was a joke. So I actually had to bring in myself personally the first wheelbarrow into the house so that he would believe. It has this very natural, very nice texture and it's a very sensual floor. It's fantastic to walk barefooted on it. Sounds great. If you'd like a rammed earth floor, it's pretty easy and dirt cheap. First of all, you've got to find the dirt. Then put the first layer down and squash it flat. Add a fine layer and let that dry for a couple of weeks. Fill in the cracks with clay, wait a few more days, and then seal it with oil or wax. 
Alex used a milk-based mixture called casein. Once that's dry, it's good to go. There's no dust and you can wipe it clean. Alex didn't stop at digging up dirt for the floors. The walls are made from clay. Using natural materials means the walls can breathe in the heat and help keep the rooms cool without energy guzzling air conditioning. What you see here is a clay stucco. This, this wall is basically this is a 38 centimeter clay brick and on both sides there are about five, seven, five to six centimeters of clay stucco. And even that white uh, is actually clay stucco. This is a kaolin, which is a white clay. So this is not painted. At the other end of the open plan living space is the real hub of the home. We do spend most of our life in the kitchen. Yeah. When we're in here, the kids can be playing over there or we can have dinners here. Keeping an eye on the kids aside, the open plan design is all part of the home's clever natural air conditioning. The idea is that you have high rooms, high ceilings, and these windows are basically all, all over the house. And through cross ventilation, you get rid of the heat, basically. The hallway, with its beautiful natural wood floor, links the main living space to the bedrooms. There you go. And there's just pebbles underneath, basically. Since this is not, uh, like, totally stuck together, the whole floor moves a little bit. It's the charm of it. Alex is a big fan of something called building biology. If it ain't natural, it ain't being used. All the woodwork is just oil. There's no chemicals, natural oils, linseed oil. But sometimes, when you make a home really green and really smart, there's one thing that turns out to be, well, just too darn smart. Check out the folding wall. Once it's closed, it looks like a cupboard. I still get that confused, actually. I come here, and I feel and I try and open the door, and then I eventually figure out that that's where it is. <laughs> this is the private uh, area. This is our bedroom. This home doesn't just know how to stay cool. Both fireplaces, the one in the living room and the one here, has a heat exchanger inside. There's a glass here. You can put it down, which conserves the heat inside this chamber. The air gets hot inside. And then you can have a little vent here. You switch it on, and then the hot air gets blown out. With a mixture of fireplace heat exchangers and more high ceilings, Alex and family stay snug in the winter and cool in the summer. And this is the way to the bathroom. The shower is actually outside of the house. And I had the idea that you would have a wood grate where you could stand on. You can open the door. You see out to the garden. And then uh, if you feel like taking a bath, you just lift this up and you have a bathtub underneath. So that's where it is. And of course, Alex has thought of a way of recycling all that dirty water. And that's part of the grey water system. Yeah. So that bathtub gets emptied out into the garden, filtered in the um, sand and pebble filter, and then it goes into the watering system. The solar panels generate electricity to heat about 80% of the home's hot water. But there's one more bit of clever design that Alex and his architect came up with to control that searing summer heat. This house is an automatic shading system. And it has a little light sensor on the roof. As the sun starts to hit one side of the house, the shutters on that side of the house, they would go down automatically. And then during the day, as the sun travels, it starts to adjust the louvers, brings more and more light in as the sun's going down. When the sun disappears, it actually goes up. We're very proud that we managed to build an ecological house in Greece. There are not that many. I think that alone is a big achievement. This groundbreaking house, one of the first green homes in Greece, can show us all the path to fantastic modern design.